Today, we talk about uh, advice on deep thought depression, also known as um, thinking too much. And people know what I'm talking about. When you think about a situation, a bad situation, and you think about it so much that you end up getting depressed over it. Even though the situation hasn't even happened yet, or not a guarantee to happen, you're still thinking about it because you're so worried about it that you actually make yourself depressed. And then you worry the people around you, and blah blah blah. Um, let's say that you're worried about you and your friend, okay? You're worried about if this situation over here explodes, your friend may not be your friend anymore. And you start deep thinking that, you know? And then you end up actually visualizing the scenario. Like, you make a simulation in your head on how the situation is going to end and how you are not going to be the happy face anymore. So, um, usually when it gets to that point to where I'm actually visualizing how the situation will happen, like how this person will walk up to me and tell me that doesn't want any friends anymore, and I'll say why, and she'll say because, and I'll say why, and she'll say bleh, and I'll say moo, and she'll say oink, and I'll say nay, and she'll say e, <laughs> and then, um, all of a sudden you're not friends anymore, and then you actually visualize yourself crying, and what this person will do, like, you end up making a sad story out of it. You simulize, simulate a bad story out of a situation that hasn't really happened yet, and you end up turning into a sad story that makes you depressed. And a lot of people look at it that way, but that's pretty much what it is. You end up thinking so much, you make a tragedy story, sad story out of it, that you're watching as like a movie, simula simulating in your own head, and you, and your friend, and everyone that involved are the characters. So now, you're sad, and um, you're sad over a situation that hasn't even happened yet, or that's not even guaranteed to happen. So that's, that's what deep thought depression is. And it gets to the point where you think about it so much, you're like obsessed with it, like that's all you do. It's like watching a movie. A movie that you really like, and you don't want to stop watching it because you really like it. It's the same, same thing. Well, you don't like this movie, but you have no choice because it makes you depressed. Like, yeah. So, why do people um, have deep thought depressions? Well, me, this is my theory on why, and I think a lot of people would agree. I think people have deep thought depressions because uh, they think about what they're worried about. They try to get themselves ready if the situation occurs, so they're not taken off guard. And... They try to think of every possibility, so they're ready for every possibility. Because they are so worried that that's going to happen, that they don't want it to happen. So they actually prepare themselves in case it does. Yeah, basically, that's what it is. And a lot of times people worry because, like I said, um, they don't want that to happen. They love that person, and they don't want to lose that person. So they'll actually, they worry about it so much that they actually start to visualize. Like I said, they start to visualize it, and then... It becomes a problem, and then they get sad. But that's usually why. So on the flip side, if you're thinking about losing somebody, and it makes you sad, be happy that it does, because that means that you actually do love this person, or you care about this person enough to think about, wow, what would happen if I lost this person? Like, wow, that would suck, and it makes you sad. Other than thinking, oh, I don't care if I lose that person, Pff, whatever. That's that's when you have to worry when you don't care. But if it makes you sad. Most likely you do. So, good for you. And, um, yeah. Ah, this chair's annoying. So, uh, usually how I fix my deep thought depressions when I get them is putting a positive outlook on life like I just did, you know? Um, like, hey, you're thinking about it's making you sad, so that's kind of a good thing. It means you still care for that person. So, most likely that's not going to happen. Like, okay, for example, let's say that I'm afraid... I'm not going to love my husband anymore. Something's just going to change and I'm not going to love him anymore. I'll end up thinking about that and how it would happen and what would be the cause of it and blah, 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 blah. And it makes me sad. And then when I, take, I step back and I think, well, if anything, I'm glad that it makes me sad because then that means I still love him because I don't want to lose him. See what I'm saying? Rather than if you thought like, oh, what would happen if I didn't love this person? I don't care. Or just not thinking about it at all. That would worry me because that means you're not concerned about that and you don't care. Not saying you should think about that all the time. Just saying, you know, when the thought comes around and it kind of makes you sad, don't get too sad because that means obviously what you're thinking about is not going to happen because you still love that person because you care and that's why you're sad. See? So it can't happen because you're still, you know what I'm saying? Yeah.
So yeah, that's one itchy nose. That's one um, positive outlook, and that helps you get out of that depression because then you realize, oh, it's not really going to happen because I'm good. Another way to do it is um, look at it from the big picture, from the big perspective, which is why are you worrying about a situation that's not even happening at this moment? It's not even close to happening at all. Like, um, for example, you're worried your parents are going to die, okay? Or, wait, I mean, that's not a good example for this situation. Okay, wait, I got a better one. Okay, let's say that um, there's this test coming up, and you have to pass this test in order to get into the new school, because if you get into the new school, then your parents will be happy and blah, blah, blah. This test is like six months, five months away, because I have one hand, so five months away, okay? You're so worried about this test that you start thinking about, oh my god, what happens if I fail? Now everyone is sad, and everyone is crying, and I hate myself, blah, 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 blah. There you go again. You're thinking, you're deep thinking of the situation. You actually simulate the simulation. No. Yeah. Yeah. You simulate the thoughts in your head to the point where you hear everyone saying stuff line for line, and then you feel everyone's emotion, and you actually start to feel that guilt in yourself. That's bad. So, usually what I do with stuff like that, especially like stuff that's like while away and you're so worried about it, stop! Stop worrying, because guess what? It's five months away. All this time that you're doing worrying about passing the test, you could be studying for that test. Actually saying, you know what? I can do this. I got this. I'm going to pass this test because I know I can. Duh. I mean, you can have that kind of attitude and just, I mean, work on the test and you know, study, and then when you get there, then you pass the test and you're happy. And then it's okay if you get up to the test day and you worry about stuff like that. That's normal. That's when you probably should because, okay, because, you know, it's tomorrow. So that's when you check, am I prepared? Am I good? Am I got this? And then that's when you worry. But when it's five months away, you, you don't even know if, if you're not going to pass it or not. You don't even know if you're going to take the test. What happens if something within that five months happens you have not taken it or you take a different test and you can't take the test? Then what? You've worried all this time for nothing because you're not even taking the test. You don't, you never know what's going to happen in the future. You never know. There's no point worrying until you know for sure that that situation is going to happen. Do you know for sure that you're going to take that test? When you actually, the day before you take the test, you can worry a little bit. A little bit! Not a lot, okay? Just a little bit. Like, oh man, what happens if I don't pass the test? Da 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 da. Because that might be a good thing. That might make you take the test even better and take your time because you're really trying. But worrying for five months? Are you kidding me? You don't even know if you're going to be there five months down the road. No one knows what's going to happen in the future. So that usually helps me get out of it too. It's being like, you know what? I'm not going to worry about it because that situation's not even here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy and be happy with my life now and the people around me. And then, you know, be ready for that situation when it comes. And it, it makes it a lot easier because, I'll tell you what, half the stuff that I've simulated in my brain and that I've worried about actually never happened. Never Either the situation got diverted or it ended up working better in my favor or it just never happened. Like, it just stopped, you know? And it's like, wow, I wasted all that time being depressed and being worried about something that never even happened. Like three months later. Like, that's dumb. It's stupid. Like, you could have, I could have been happy enjoying people's company and, like, putting all that energy in a positive thing. So, I mean, if you look at it that way, it's kind of stupid to worry about something that's going to happen, if it's going to happen five, six, ten, a year from now. You know, months, years, weeks. Days. Well, days are kind of hard, but you know what I mean. I have hiccups now, and that makes me sad. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's how I deal with, um, deep thought depression. That's my thought on it. Um, another thing you can do, too, especially if your mind is super active, like mine, because mine's super active, I can get into a depressed thought easy, because my mind's just, oh, da 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 If your mind's like that, too, uh, keep yourself busy, you know? Don't give your mind a chance to really think, you know? Just keep, like me, like, I'm a stay-at-home wife, so I'm home alone a lot by myself. And sometimes that's not a good thing. Actually, most of the time that's not a good thing for me at all. 
So, um, I do stuff. I either play video games or I'll watch YouTube videos. I will do something to keep my mind off of any things that I worry about. I usually save those for... Actually, I try not to save those. I try to just keep my mind off of it. And then by the time my husband gets home, I'm not even thinking about it. Because now my focus is on him. Of course. So, yeah. Uh, I know this is most difficult, though, at night when you're sleeping. But, I mean, just try to go to sleep. Just tell yourself, go to sleep. Don't worry about it. That's when you got to tell yourself what I'm telling you right now. You don't even know if that's going to happen. Why are you worrying about that? Wait, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. That's usually what I tell myself. And then I go to sleep and I'm good. So, yeah, that's what deep thought thinking is. And those are my tips on how to get out of that situation, which is to think positive, um, analyze why you're thinking about this, and how it actually affects that outcome, which is why I said, you know, thinking about losing somebody and you're sad about it, you're not going to because you still care about that person. It's when you don't feel upset about thinking about this situation that it could cause a problem. So, yeah. Um, and, let's see, keep your mind busy. Positive spin and analyzing. Mm -hmm. When you life, put life perspective on things, it makes everything a whole lot easier. So, uh, yeah, that's my advice for today. Uh -huh. Hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving, and I will see you when I see ya. Woo!